Well, good morning. Got the two girls on top and blue right there in the middle. Alright guys, it's Wednesday. No school today. I got Bruno with me today. Say hey Bruno. Hey Bruno. <laughs> so Bruno's gonna be the co-captain today, the co-pilot rather. Got the trailer hooked up. We're heading back to Hawkins County to get those cherry logs. Stick with me here and uh, see if we can get them home safely the day before the rain comes. Alright, got the trailer hooked up and if anybody out there has a nice dump trailer they want to donate to the channel Send me an email because this thing right here is on its last leg, I'll tell you. This is an old car hauler. It's done me pretty good for the past 10 years, but my goodness. It is bent and just it's in terrible shape. It needs a new floor. The wheels are getting a little bad. The brakes don't work. And up here on the tongue, it's actually bent. So I'll stand by and wait on the email and I'll come pick it up. I'm just kidding about that. I'll probably save up and buy one sooner than later. But as you can see on this end, it's being really bad right here at the front. It does okay hauling, but I wouldn't want to take it on the interstate or nothing like that. So that's enough about that. Let's go get some logs. Welcome back to the sawmill guys. It's Friday. There's a lot going on here. It's about 11 o'clock. My buddy Greg will be here in about one hour with some white pine. He's bringing over some eight and a half and some 17 footers. Some really good saw logs. We'll be using that for the timber frame and also some of it for some boards if it's nice and clear. We're also going to head up here to the cherry that came in. We'll put some anchor seal on those. I already cut them to length last night and I'll show you guys the different lengths and why I cut them at those sizes. So it's going to be a good day here at the sawmill, friends. Stick here with me. If you're not subscribed to this channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button right below and hit the like button as well because this is going to be a good video, guys. Hang in there. We're going to get started here in just a minute. Friends, looks like we're delayed on getting that pine in here. Greg is running about an hour behind. So let's take a look at this cherry. Now I got three logs total coming to the mill. This is the first two. And I know what you're thinking. Well, there's four laying there. And here's what happened. Right here, the two bottom cuts right here on both of them. That one up there is about 32 inches on the large end. This one right here is about 30 inches. The small end is about 24. And those are eight footers. Then I had two additional pieces on the top that are four feet long. That's a straight one right there. And this one actually has a nice crotch at the top of it. Now Cherry has a bad habit for dog legging toward the top off the first cut. And that happened in both these trees. You can see that curve on this butt cut right here coming down through here. And it got worse up there at the top. So I had to cut that off. That wouldn't have made sense to try to saw a 12 foot slab and have that big dog leg in it. It looked horrible and had a lot of waste. So that's what I usually do with cherry. I'll get a bottom log. It's pretty straight. This one right here is an eight footer. And then you take the top, which is four feet. And I still have a nice slab log here. I mean, that right there will be about 22 inches on the width. When I make slabs out of that one, they're four feet long. 
that's perfect sizes for coffee tables and stuff like that something else to note here guys if a large sawmill would have bought these logs the logger would have cut these at eight feet and that four foot section right there would have went in the burn pile they would not even want to fool with this short stuff right here a guy like me does not mind short stuff there's a lot of value there and you can get a good deal on it because you're helping the logger out instead of him just selling that one log right there he's actually selling a 12 footer and getting more money out of it so one of the reasons i'm really excited here about this timber is the size of it it's hard to find cherry in my neck of the woods which is northeast tennessee anything bigger than 18 inches is really hard to find you know the minimal size on these are 24 on the small end that's pretty good so these will make some really nice slabs hopefully have these on the sawmill by the first of the week maybe even by sunday if i can get some stuff done here well, it's lunchtime already. I think I'm going to go ahead inside and get something to eat. By the time that's over with, Greg should be here with that white pine. They'll probably pull up right now and start to take my first bite. That's the way it always goes. Man, it's windy out here today. Still nice, though. This is November, what is it, November the 13th here in northeast Tennessee. The high today is 65. Perfect weather, guys. My favorite time of the year. load of white pine got some eight foot saw logs in there and a lot of 17 footers we'll be using those for the top plates for the timber frame i've been waiting on these for a few months actually been looking forward to this so i get that timber frame going pretty good load guys he cut those yesterday and this morning there's a lot of pitch on the end of them as you can see pretty nasty but i like sawing white pine looking forward to these a real nice one here on the end that's about 20 24 inches right there, not much taper in it. Good deal. All right, friends, let me show you what I'm working on here. I was adjusting my high performance blade guides. As you can see, they are right there. They're on the top and the bottom of the blade, those two little pads. And what that does, if your blade starts getting hot and it's fanning or tries to take a dive on you, that right there kind of keeps them in check and from wandering around too much. And they got some adjustments on there. There's three adjustments for each pad right there. So three for the top, three for the bottom. You got that little feeler gauge it came with. I think that's maybe six one thousandths. I'm not really sure to be honest with you. But you tighten that up, you put that feeler gauge in there and you make sure there's clearance in there between the guide and the blade. That's the same thing for both sides. But I was in here doing some cleanup this morning. There was just tons of sawdust in here. It was a mess. It was kind of like peanut butter in there. Just kept up in there really bad. So doing a little bit of maintenance here today before we get started. But I thought I'd share with you guys some of the inner workings of this mill. High performance blade guides right there. And it looks like that top one actually should come down just a little bit. I got the bottom one good, but the one on the top might come down just a little bit right there. I think I'll adjust that off camera here. On the sawmill today we got some red oak that's an eight footer not a bad log right there some knots and some defects but not too bad got another red oak right here on the loading arms that's a good size one right there one more red oak that's number three and number four right there behind it that one on the very back right there has been on the ground for about five years 
So who knows what's going to be inside of it. The rest of these were cut about a month ago. Really nice logs right here. These will make some really good lumber. Not really cabinet grade wood or quarter saw material, nothing like that, but good stuff for what we're going to be using it for. Got a nice, nasty check right there going down the middle. Once again, anchor seal does not always work like you hope it will. It usually does work, but sometimes oak will go ahead and split on you anyways. It naturally wants to split on that plane regardless of what you do. friends it got dark on us had to run inside and eat dinner i hate this time change it's only six o'clock and it looks like it's about 10 o'clock at night so this right here is a good example of how you plane saw right there's the pith i don't know if that's going to come up or not this is kind of dark on this end right here but you work around that middle right there and you take boards off and that's how you plane saw a timber and the whole time you're keeping this right here centered to whatever kind of post you want or finish size in this case, it's an eight by eight. And right now I've been working off this side here and the bottom and they're finished because I'm four inches in on both those planes right there to my pith. So now I'll come down on the top 
with cuts till I get to eight inches. And the same thing over here and we'll be good. So it's pretty easy when you kind of understand the principles there on plane saw. And it's a really good way of getting some good boards out of a timber and getting rid of the pith and making a post or something out of it. Getting some really nice red oak here on the side cuts. As you can see, this piece right here is really nice and clear other than that little hole right there from a knot that probably rotted out or something. Really nice boards. They look really good right here. Got a nice pattern on the grain. Got little cathedrals there on the side. Looking real good. I should have done five quarter on these actually. They're a lot nicer than I thought they was going to be. You never know about this stuff. So we'll cut the sawmill back on. We'll go ahead and work on those other two planes and finish up that timber. And we'll probably call it a night. Stick here with me, guys. We'll finish this one up and finish strong here. What's up? The cats are up here. Got the black cat. We got cabbage over here. What are you doing, big guy? They'll be out of here as soon as I cut the sawmill on. They hate the noise. 